most of them have been doing business with the same investment company for 40 years. So you're talking about a publicly traded company, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they've got relationships since they were founded and um, they could buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin in a minute, no money down on a phone call. And no one would say a second thought if it comes through a spot ETF. But if they were to say, I want to buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin, the commodity, they would need to have 16 board meetings, 100 lawyers and accountants review it. They would have to go through all sorts of contortions, a thousand pages of operating procedures. There would be endless debate and they would have to come up with a billion dollars of cash. So the difference between Bitcoin and the spot ETF is profound for the institution. Welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Michael Saylor discussing the upcoming price action and optimism for a significant bull run in the Bitcoin market very soon. Saylor's optimism is grounded in the upcoming halving event in April and the upcoming approval of a Bitcoin spot ETF by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC is presently evaluating various applications with its main proponent being BlackRock. With BlackRock's substantial influence, there is growing confidence that at least one spot Bitcoin ETF will receive approval in the very near future. This would be a monumental achievement for the Bitcoin community, something many have anticipated for over a decade. Securing approval would be transformative for the cryptocurrency world. It would pave the way for substantial institutional investment, attracting sovereign wealth funds, major corporations, and even governments. Saylor believes this will open the door for massive companies to hold cryptocurrencies on their balance sheets. Let's get right into the latest interview with Michael Saylor, as he discusses how Bitcoin is a game changer in 2023 and what changes we can expect in crypto very soon. Don't forget to share your thoughts and comments down below and leave a like if you enjoy the content we do here. Approval uh, or endorsement of a regulated crypto exchange by the SEC, if they recognize an exchange or certify or endorse one, that'll be a fourth big milestone. Any kind of other guidance, constructive guidance issued by the regulators out of DC would be a fifth big milestone. So I think those are all the major milestones we can look forward to. What are your thoughts on the macro picture and its impact on Bitcoin? I think that the most important place to start is to recognize that every conventional economic metric that is talked about in mainstream media or in mainstream political conversations is a man-made fabricated metric. It's just a synthesized metric that is created, named and defined and measured by an interested organization that has a vested interest in creating a certain effect. All the labor statistics, all the monetary statistics, all the inflation statistics, all of these things, the definition, like, will we have a soft landing? Well, of course we'll have a soft landing because it's politically advantageous to have a soft landing. So how do you create a soft landing? You simply define a measure of the economy that you know will land softly, and then you go and you track that and you report that. And there are parts of the economy that had a hard landing, but we simply don't report that. I guess what I'm trying to say here is there's a lot of conventional debate in the macroeconomic sphere about conventional synthesized metrics. And the GDP results don't track the economy. The inflation results don't track the price of stuff. The rate of change, you know, uh, sector to sector doesn't necessarily track what you think it tracks because the people that create the metrics have uh, too much flexibility with regard to what they choose to measure and how they choose to measure it. There's an old saying in the propaganda business, you can't tell people what to think, but we can tell them what to think about. They don't address the elephant in the room, like the fact that, well, 40% of the people aren't working. Should they be? <laughs> Not is the unemployment rate moved from 3.1 to 3.2 or from 3.1 to 3.0. That's irrelevant. So uh, yeah, I think that um, we will always manage these things. So 
as to kick the can down the road and avoid acknowledging anything that's uh, that's terribly disturbing in the near near term time frame. What is your advice to that average family who doesn't have savings and lives paycheck to paycheck? Well, my, my number one advice is just dollar cost average into Bitcoin. And if you have money that you don't need for the next four years, that money you sweep into a Bitcoin investment, Bitcoin's the apex property, and then you let time work for you. The longer amount of time you have, then the better off you'll be. I generally think, you know, Bitcoin is the apex property. The conventional mediocre properties are either high quality real estate or, or high quality stocks, the S&P index. If you wanted any other idea, like today, I would I would hold extremely high des highly desirable real estate that everybody's going to want, or unregulated monopolies that are big tech, unregulated digital monopolies. But they're both of those are inferior to Bitcoin by a lot. So if you want a diversification, you hold unregulated digital monopolies, and you hold extremely luxurious, desirable, prestigious real estate, and. Um, Everything else is probably going to be a loser, uh, holding cash, holding bonds, holding any other run of the mill stock or whatever. It's just the world is too risky. And in terms of how you accumulate wealth, it's well, hey, you have to work pretty hard at something, whatever it is. You have to be good as a doctor or a dentist or, or uh, IT professional or whatever. You have to do something to generate cash flow. And then you look to acquire the apex property using your cash flows or using equity or using debt, intelligent debt. Saylor challenges the conventional macroeconomic metrics, asserting that these metrics are often manipulated to paint a specific narrative, like labor statistics and inflation figures, which are selectively measured to create desired effects rather than reflecting the true state of the economy. In this context, Bitcoin emerges as an alternative, detached from the manipulations of the conventional economic sphere. Saylor also highlights that established corporations like Apple Amazon and Google will use their established relationships acquired over decades to swiftly acquire substantial amounts of Bitcoin through a spot ETF, bypassing the cumbersome processes involved in procuring the actual commodity. This disparity underscores the transformative power of cryptocurrencies in traditional financial institutions. Michael Saylor underscores the importance of embracing digital currencies as the economic landscape is changing rapidly and urges investors to leverage Bitcoin's potential to secure a more prosperous financial future. What do you think about the latest interview with Michael Saylor? And how do you think Bitcoin's trajectory in the coming months will impact the crypto market and the world of investing? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.